Welcome back, everybody. The idea of traveling down the highway in a van emblazoned with the word peace is not new. We just don't see it as much anymore as we might have in decades past. But for Tacoma native Kwabi Amoa Forsen, this is a new thing that is a great thing, using a peace bus to promote exactly that. Just back from a long trip down to the southern border, Kwabi is here with me. It's so yeah. nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you too, Margaret. Um, I'm just in awe and I'm thankful because it feels like the news is just this, you know, incoming all the time. Yeah. That it's great to hear about people who believe in the things that we all want. Hmm. like peace, like unity. How did you get started doing this? Well, Margaret, um, I started first, well, first of all, I, I never thought of myself being a, a, a peace activist or a peace campaigner. I was just going to work, going to school, doing grad school and doing my thing. But I felt like I was being unfulfilled. I feel like I wasn't mm -hmm. giving back to my community. And so I started doing research about peace activists, learning about, you know, um, this, my, uh, Brian Haw, I'll, I'll go ahead and talk about him yeah, later. Yeah, do. But I first started uh, going to my local park, Wrights Park, and I brought this poster with me. <laughs> and I would Love, peace, and justice yes, for all. Yes, and I would use this poster, I would go out to Wrights Park, I'd, I'd sit down, and people would see me with this poster, and they'd be like, hey, what is this guy doing? Mm -hmm. So that they'd come up naturally, and they would ask me what I'm doing, and I'd say I'm talking to people about peace. And we would have conversations about peace, and I thought I was adding to the atmosphere of the of the of the park and having it be relaxed, and and I'd have classical music playing, and I would talk to people about what peace meant and educate myself on what it meant to others, and so mm -hmm. that's how I got started, and I was doing that for a while, and then I was attacked by uh, someone on the street, and um, from that time on, I was apprehensive about going to the park again because yeah. I wasn't sure if the person would come and attack me again. But was it, was, it connected to your work? Did not they, at all. Okay. Uh, mentally ill, um, a person who was struggling with mental illness, yeah. and they attacked me. And from that time forth, I started going to different parts of Tacoma, which was a good thing, mm -hmm. because in that, it compelled me to have conversations at different places. And so after that, I went to Europe. <laughs> I had a friend stationed uh, in Netherlands. I went to go visit him. He said, bring your poster. I brought my poster, and I walked in um, about... I want to say nine countries with my poster, engaging with people and having conversations about peace. And then that takes us to right now where the peace bus. And so that's a, it's an extension of that. The fact that you're talking to people, there are two things that come to mind. First of all, I'm curious what they say peace mm -hmm. means to them. But secondly, just that when we think about those concepts, I think we're just more conscious of acting on our own truths about peace and that sort of thing. For if sure. we're just raising it in our own consciousness. What did people tell you that struck sure. you? you well, th that's, that's the reason why we're doing it, to create an understanding, an overall understanding of what peace means. And that's why we're asking the question. I've heard everything under the sun. <laughs> I've heard all sorts of things. But there are some, um, some constants, some principles mm -hmm. that we reach out and we can, we can formulate through our conversations. And one of those, one, and one of these main things is when it comes to interpersonal peace is food, clothes, and shelter. Making and creating a society um, where people have those fundamental mm -hmm. uh, principles in place so they can live their lives. Because if you don't have food, clothes, and shelter, you're not living, you're surviving. So, Or from, maybe not even that. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So it's 2019, Margaret. People in the world today should have food, clothes, and shelter. It's not, a, it's not something that's abstract. It's not something that, that can't be done. It's tangible. And I've heard from people uh, all, over, all over the world, and they believe that food, clothes, and shelter is something that needs to be established for your everyday average citizen. Because we know there is enough if mm -hmm. we just figure out how to distribute things sure. and stop assigning different values to different lives, which mm. is where most of the evil comes from in the world. Yeah. Your inspiration was a man named Brian Haw. You yeah. mentioned him. Tell me about yeah, Brian. Brian's my guy. It's my guy. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm, I'm very familiar with Martin Luther King and Gandhi. These guys are awesome. But when I was doing my research, I was looking for someone in the current day who is uh, making strides towards peace in our current day and time. And I came across Brian Haw. He's now, he died in 2011. But he spent 11 years outside of Parliament Square in London, England, promoting peace. And he had this weird, crazy idea, which I believe a lot of people believe. And that is that no matter where you come from, 
your economic status, whatever your religion is, we are equal because we're human beings. And he really stood by this principle, and I just, I fell in love with it, with him and his mission, and I tried to implement that in my own efforts with the Peace Bus. Now, you've run across some very special people, everybody's special, but some things that were um, very memorable to you. Uh, Michael Nagler, tell me yeah. about Michael. So Michael Nagler was the professor of nonviolence at Berkeley, uh, for a number of years, and now he runs a center in Petaluma, California that's called the Meta Center. And it's a center completely devoted to nonviolence and teaching people about what nonviolence means. And so we sat down with him, did a whole podcast with him, asked him several questions about his work. He believes that there's this shift that's going to happen where people, we, we move from a society that's materialistic to people-oriented, and that will bring fulfillment in our lives and compel us to uh, be more positive in each other's lives. And so we talked about that, and I think that if we focus on peace and create a methodology behind practicing it, we can create this new world he's talking about. And that could include and, and begin, if I'm not incorrect, let me know if I am, mm -hmm. in, in just how we behave every day. Peace, sure. we may think of as, okay, there's no war, there's no conflict, yeah. but it can actually mean that, that I'm just nice to you when I see you, that I am aware of you, that I open the door, that I help you with a package, that I'm civil in my dealings with other people. For sure, it's all connected, Margaret. There's three kinds of peace, there's inner peace, there's interpersonal peace, and then there's the world peace you're talking about with, you know, if America has better ties with Canada and things like that. And they're all intertwined, they're all, yeah. all equally important. But we can do something for today sure. about for that. Sure. Is it possible for us to skip ahead to the kids at Disneyland? I'm gonna ask our producer. Yes, all right, cool. so um, you talked to children at Disneyland sure and did. young people, which is kind of a great place. They're already in the happiest place on <laughs> yeah. earth, so they're, they're in the frame yeah. of mind. Yeah. And, and you asked them a few things, and we wanted to play what they had to say, so cool. here's a look at that. All right. What does peace mean to you? Peace means love. <laughs> peace means is being good and being very helpful and b very big-hearted. Love. Oh, uh, like quiet time or not loud, like the volume down. Happiness? Um, peace means to me that uh, everybody's kind and it's fair for everybody and there's no outbreaks or anything. Hmm. That's something. And we think of those things as naive sometimes, mm -hmm. but I think they're the most real politic things there are. For sure. And especially coming from kids, they're so innocent. Um, they're telling it how it is. And I think we can learn so much. To have a positive connotation already attributed to peace at that age is so mm -hmm. profound. They've thought about it. And yeah. they've thought about fairness as a part of that, which is really interesting, mm -hmm. the idea of equity. So what happens with the Peace Bus next? Where are the you going? Peace bus. Well, okay, so <laughs> we hope to um, do an East Coast excursion mm -hmm. uh, next year. But in the meantime, we're hoping to go to uh, schools in our area and tell what we've learned, yeah. to share the education we've gotten from everyday people about what peace means, and hopefully through this, create a methodology behind putting peace into action. Great, well I hope this segment will help. It'll be online this afternoon. So email it to whoever you like out there and see if we can't get that going. Thank you, you are a wonderful human being. Thank you so much, being. Margaret, appreciate, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, you can help, the Peace Bus is accepting donations of food, clothes, and hygiene products. We've got all the information on how you can help and keep up with the Peace Bus on our website.